Right, welcome to the first video of 2022 involving the best and worst teams at 5v4 and also 4v5 win percentages, but we're starting with 5v4. So, generally speaking, <clears throat> this will be more comparison to what we saw last year. And the general note really has been, you know, the drop-off of Australis, for one. The drop-off of North America. So, for example, last year we had EG, Liquid, and occasionally Chaos popping into the actual top 10s. Whereas this year it's been a, quite a different picture, really. So let's, let's get started. So top 10 by 5v4 in 2021, which is top 50 and minimum 100 maps filter, which is of course courtesy of HLTV.org. So no surprise really, you see the two leaders there by a decent mount, like margin as well. Gambit and Na'Vi, Gambit overall being slightly ahead of a Na'Vi. Not too much between them, it's probably not worth actually negotiating too much, but I suppose the big difference here is that we have Fiend and also Extra Salt rounding out the top five alongside Vitality. So Vitality last year were also prominent in the top 10s, along with FaZe as well, and Heroic were here. And Liquid just about scrape in too, but new entries such as Entropic, Harvu, Extra Soul, and Fiend, quite interesting to see. So let's go, go ahead and go to the bottom 10 for contrast. And of course, EG, I said that they were one of the prominent teams in the top 10. Same goes for Astralis. We see them, you know, not even making the actual, uh, not even making this actual top 10 sort of uh, area, this time being on the complete opposite side. And the same can be said, you know, with teams like NIP, but it's actually, you know, it's the Young Ninja side. Just in case people start to think they see the logo, they think, oh, well, NIP? No, it's the Young Ninjas. They don't actually have a unique logo from what I could gather. So, if you do see that, look at this bit just in case. <clears throat> but the main thing I've seen is just the fact that EGU's had such a drop-off from 2020 to 2021, and it wasn't exactly out of the limelight. So let's go ahead and get to the top 10 on the CT side. So this is more like it. So this top five teams here... That's more like the sort of teams we've seen consistently around that, at least in the last six months, I guess, if we count FaZe. The last six months, FaZe has been up there. But if we actually consider through the whole year, it would be these four teams, and then, <clears throat> yeah, it's a bit of a toss-up, really. You throw quite a few different teams into that fifth sort of spot, whether it's VP, um, any of the CIS sides like that, or if you just really want to tempt fate and say NIP, perhaps, as well. And of course, we're interesting NIP, they do make their way into the top 10 here. This is the actual NIP side. But Fiend and Extra Salt keeping consistent. They stay in the top 10 for CT side. <clears throat> and now on the bottom 10, we have Sprout, Pain Gaming, Complexity, LDLC, Namiga, Lingby Vikings, Bad News Bears, Saw, Young Ninjas, and Evil Geniuses. So Evil Geniuses being the worst team on the CT side when they actually do have the opening kill. Quite interesting to think about, really. But not surprising by any means. This is now the T side, so this is quite interesting really, because if we actually refer to the CT side just very quickly, so I'll just show the CT side. So the CT side peak is about 76.2, then 75.1, you know, let's say the top 5 is a 75.3 average. On the T side, it's actually, you know, a good percentage higher, which is quite surprising really, because you, know, you wouldn't really expect that just because of the nature of the game but at the same time you could argue with how the game you know works technically if you get an opening kill on the t side that ct defense has to scramble there's that to try and gamble stack that's got something that has been increasing more and more in the last two years or so gamble stacking where you lose an opening kill you decide let's just dedicate everybody towards this side of the map if they come here great if they don't we save we lose the round whatever but Na'Vi were probably one of the teams that were able to capitalise on getting those opening kills, as well as then actually just winning the rounds. And Liquid make their reappearance here, as well as Extra Salt making sure that they do push in as well. So it's quite nice to see Extra Salt consistently being around these parts. It'll be interesting to see what differences there are when they lose OC as well, of course. <clears throat> so we're going to check the bottom 10 now as well. So EG actually scraped themselves at the top of the bottom 10, which is... It doesn't really mean anything, but Team 1, that's, that's, that's a drastic difference. Like, for the let's say yeah, 71.2 to 66.1, there's a 5% difference from the 10th worst to then the worst. Like that, That's a really big margin difference. But then, quite interesting, people will be surprised about Astralis. You know, you consider Glaive's leadership, Glaive's ability to call on that T side, but clearly, when they get that opening kill the T side or through 2021, they were really struggling to actually convert those rounds into wins, right? So we're now going to look at the 4v5. So 
this is on the opposite side. This is where you lose the opening kill. Gambit and Na'Vi, of course, are in that top five area, as well as Vitality. Ents, who are actually one of the teams that surprised a lot of people, really, in both, I think it was both Pro Leagues, thinking about it, as well as occasionally making Spurs at the Major too. And then Sinners had that Pro League situation where they did kind of um, throw a spanner in the works, I think it's fair to say, with uh, the G2 group and cause havoc in there. But interesting to see Liquid in here as well, Mobstar Riders, Heroic, Extra Salt, Big. And then we'll move on forward. So the bottom 10 by 4v5 again has Astralis. So even when you consider that they were not very good at converting 5v4s, they're now even, you know, they're just as bad really converting 4v5s as well. So you could basically argue a case where you combine the situation where they lose the opening or they gain it. They're still not, you know, they're arguably one of the worst teams at doing it both ways, which is kind of crazy really. Astralis is one of the teams that we look at when it comes to the, you know, playing the game out in the uh, correct manner, as it were. So this is now top 10 on the CT side. So Heroic, one of the star teams really over the last year and a half since the uh, pandemic actually was ongoing. Led by Cadian, of course, and on that CT side, clearly they've been doing really well when it comes to whether it's gamble stacking or just making the direct call or getting multi-kills as well. Multi-kills is probably one of the big things about Heroic CT side, I always found, that players like Shush, Refresh, they could always give you two kills when they're actually trying to hold down their bomb site, especially when, you know, they're in the right position at least. So, quite a difference though, you know, 3%, there's a steep drop here. Now we're going to look at bottom 10 and EG, again at the bottom. Fnatic make their way in, but I won't put too much um, favour into this just because the new Fnatic lineup had only what maybe 25 maps. This Fnatic lineup here has 112. Like this isn't this is not respective of what the current lineup is. Now we've got Dignitas in here as well. They'll see Young Ninja, Saw, Namiga, Team One. Namiga were a team that popped up a lot last year as well. Same goes for Saw. Um, LDLC is a new one. Sangal as well. They popped up quite a few times, but. Yeah, not too surprising to see EG this far down. And now top 10 on the T side, no shock to anybody. Na'Vi, once again, number one at the T side when it comes to advantageous or disadvantageous positions as well. Sinners come in at second, which is quite an interesting one. Gambit third, Ents fourth, Vitality fifth. So this is the same top five, just in a different order from the original top 10. Lingby Vikings make a bit of an interesting appearance here. Dignitas as well, who were just shown as being bottom 10, I believe, on the CT side. So quite interesting how they are able to play the T side 4v5 better than the CT side one. Um, generally speaking, of course, it's not too unheard of to be you know, able to capitalize on that because let's say you lose a player, a start of the round on the T side, and regardless, they're going to have two bomber sites with a, probably a two or three split. You still have four players. Like, chances are if you just trade, or not even trade, if you get the opener going into that one bomber site, you're probably going to be able to get yourself into an even position with the bomb then planted and then in your favour, technically. So not too surprising, really. And then Liquid make their appearance here as well. And now we look at the bottom 10 teams for the T-side on... Well, T-side 45 win percentage, of course. And FaZe, quite interesting. So this is... I think this is more respective of the fact that you have players like Rain and Carrigan who are very willing to go for that opening duel. And unfortunately... You know, more often than not, I feel like they were losing those opening deals on the T side, and that is kind of respective of this win percentage here, because 26 before, not great. You've got along the likes of Young Ninja's Team 1, Sprout, Astralis again making an appearance, Gamer Legion here in here as well, Saw, Sangle, the actual NIP sites. We have both NIPs in here, so um, you could say that the... Uh <coughs> the skill tree over NIP doesn't quite favour the T side when it comes to losing that opening kill. But, oh no, that's going to be the end of this video, so compared to last year, we just see a lot of disappearances. NA team is not showing as well, which is not expected, well, was expected in terms of the grand scheme of things, but in terms of, you know, seeing the drop-off, seeing EG this far down, it's just a bit sad really, but obviously with the rumours floating around, the new EG lineup should be one to watch. So that's going to be it. The new next video will be coming out in the next three days as well. So if you like the video, subscribe to the channel, there's more content on the way.